everyone. Welcome back to the Covenant Eyes podcast. I'm so glad to be with you all. We want to remind you all, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It's very important that you do that. So that way you get all the latest and greatest episodes like today's episode delivered right to your smart device. So with that, Rob, what do we have going on today? We're talking about some pretty cool things. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a wonderful, uh, wonderful topic. Our, our guest today is Tim Mahoney. And uh, Tim, welcome to the Covenant Eyes podcast. Well, thank you for having me. I know we tried to connect up a little bit earlier, but now I'm here. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, oh, we're glad you're here today. We're really looking forward to this. So Tim, tell us a little bit about your background and um, you know where you're at now with the uh, seven churches of, of Revelations. Well, thank you. Yes, uh, I have been interested in making films for a long time, and it's taken a long time to to become a filmmaker. I know a lot of people are interested in the entertainment industry, uh, and what I ended up doing was getting involved with just deciding, well, I'm just going to make a film myself, and and that allowed me, you know, literally, literally 40 years ago to get a job at an ad agency. And at the time, I thought, one, you know, I'm kind of wasting my time. I want to be a filmmaker. But what I would come to learn is those years learning how to communicate and market and uh, make commercials was how God was preparing me to actually start my own film uh, company that uh, we have two companies, Thinking Man Films and Heroic Pictures. And we, uh, we also distribute films uh, in the theaters. And that's what we're here to talk about is that my... Uh, uh, to my surprise, um, I had made a series of films called Patterns of Evidence. Uh, the first one was called Exodus, and then I made a, you know, I think I've made six of them now. Uh, the other one was the Moses Controversy, and I would go to the Middle East, search for patterns of evidence of, of the Bible narrative, and then I, when I would find them, I would then, uh, you know, communicate it in a really dramatic film that would have recreations and and I would start to show people that there's evidence for the Bible uh, for the events like the Exodus and the conquest and the Red Sea crossing and where is Mount Sinai and those films played around the world on Netflix uh, the first one uh, in particular and a French uh, person by the name of Christophe Hanover saw that first film and was inspired by it and said I feel like he said, I feel like I'm supposed to do this too. So he decided to do the same kind of approach and went to Turkey to where the seven churches are. And that wow. is what, how this film got made. And so in a sense, I, I kind of discipled another filmmaker on the other side of the world who's a French believing Christian. I love that. That's great. I, I think that's incredible. And I love how God used like a unique journey to get you where you are today. So this film, this, this is exciting to me. I, I want to learn more about this film. So talk to us a little bit about what to expect in this film, what you uncovered that surprised you, um, and, and just how that went, you know, obviously working with someone that you had discipled into filmmaking as well. That must have been yeah. quite a, a rewarding experience. Well, what happened was, was that uh, uh, we divided into, there's actually two films, uh, but they're standalone films because the messages of them are really, really powerful. The first one is called Seven Churches of Revelation, Times of Fire. And the second film is Seven Churches of Revelation, Times of Deception. And this coming weekend, we are uh, going to have the second installment, which is, like I said, it's completely independent film because it is so rich with uh, biblical content. Uh, we're going to be going to the uh, four churches where uh, there were messages that were given to those four churches. Uh, and um, I'm just going to tell you who the, what those churches are. Uh, we're going to go to the church of uh, Thyatira, the church of, you know, like I never heard that name before, Thyatira. Uh, and there's different messages to each of these churches. One's Sardis, one's Philadelphia, and one's Laodicea. These were the early churches uh, that uh, the Apostle Paul had ministered to. And if anyone knows, the book of Revelation is the last book of the Bible. And it begins in the first three chapters was with a message from Christ to these churches. And uh, there's a lot of, you know, different ways to look at it. So the message was to those churches, I believe, but I believe that those messages, and many others do believe that those, those uh, messages that Christ had, they were both like he was commending some of what they were doing, but he was also saying, listen, there's problems here. As an example, 
the Church of Laodicea, it says, uh, I know your deeds, you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because of this, you're lukewarm, neither hot or cold. I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. <laughs> and you're like, mm. well, that's a pretty serious warning. It says, because mm-hmm. you know, they were wealthy. They were wealthy Christians. Uh, and they kind of didn't need, you know, help financially. And oftentimes Christians, uh, when you got money in the bank, you don't ask the Lord sometimes for, for help. You think, well, I've got it. I'm okay here. And, uh, and then it says, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. It says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. That's a very famous Bible verse. And so why I believe this film coming up, Times of Deception, is so important is because it's going to take you on the journey to the actual locations. It's incredibly cinematic, and you're going to learn from each of these churches. You're going to see the, the archaeology. You're going to go with Christoph to these places, and you're going to learn what they were doing right and what they were not doing right. And it's a warning because it says, you know, are, are we really ready for the return of Christ? Uh, the films don't really deal with... Uh, like who is the Antichrist, and as I see, that's so divisive. Every cent, every decade, somebody's pointing in one direction or another. If you've been around for a while, but what's more important, I think, is to is to take a temperature check of this. And so, um, you know, like this other church, Church of Sardis, it says, "I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up." And uh, I think that. Strengthen what remains and, and is about to die, for I found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Now, I'm just a simple guy, a filmmaker, but it's kind of interesting. I think I understand what's going on there, <laughs> and I think a lot of people do. So the question is, is what, what do we take away from this? You know, uh, the, you know the, the verses, every one of these different churches, a warning kind of ends this way. Whoever has ears... Let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And I really appreciate your ministry and what you guys are doing because it's easy to um, hide things or it's easy to, you know, have things in secret. And, you know, Jesus is warning, I'm coming soon. You know, hold on to what you have so that no one can take your crown. The one who's victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. You know, that's to the Church of Philadelphia. And, and I know that, uh, you know, they, they I believe, were a, a positive, uh, you know, church. And so that's the reason why I think this is such an important film for people to see is, first of all, most people are never going to be able to go to Turkey. And as the world gets more difficult, uh, it's probably less likely. I was supposed to be in Israel right now but because, with a tour that we were leading. But because of the war, the Middle East can flare up and can be difficult. But you can go on this tour and uh, take a spiritual journey into the future, as it were, uh, into the past and into the future. Um, c- kind of like that old movie, Back to the Future. Uh, <laughs> you're going to go back into the past to look into the future. That's awesome. And, and it's incredible, too, because... You know, I mean, we, we're very fortunate because we have access to technology where we can see that. We can go on this journey from the comfort of our homes. But I just think back, you know, 100 years ago, when they read the Bible, they didn't have that honor of using technology to see it in this way. So it's really quite a privilege and an honor, I think, that we're using technology to and redeeming it for good to experience the Bible in this way, just so we can visually see these churches and see this for our own, our own eyes. I just, I think it's incredible. So I'm very appreciative of the work that you're doing. Well, thank you. And the, um, the thing that I've, I, I look at is that uh, whenever you open a window or a door, the one door that's been open more, I think, as you said, within the last 100 years, which is fascinating, is how many stories uh, and narratives are coming at people. And what, as I was you know, thinking and, st- and studying about this as a filmmaker, I realized that, that really no other 
create, creation, you know, the, the dogs, the cats, the cows, the horses, they don't tell stories. As, you know, I know there's a lot of uh, movies about animals that are on adventures, um, but that's in real world, that's not true. It's cute, but it's not true. We were created to understand story. And why that's so significant is there's been an incredible increase in storytelling. Uh, and unfortunately, a lot of the stories that are being told, the heroic, good moral code has been corrupted. And so you're seeing an increase in stories where they're immoral or amoral, uh, where there is no right or, or, or wrong, and it's really up to the uh, character, the hero. So what you've done is you've taken the center of good that used to be vertical, and you're starting to shift the center of good so that you have anti-heroes. And, you know, I was on an airplane uh, actually going to a conference the same way that you're at, and I was walking back, you know, through the plane, and you see all the monitors on the backs of seats, and you realize people don't even sit for an hour or two, but all of them have to be watching something. So the technology has been uh, both for good as well as for distraction. And I think that some of the warnings that we have is to be distracted uh, from, from the most important things. And so uh, I sent an email out to a number of people that, um, that follow what I do. And I just talked about the fact that it's easy to grow um, cold uh, without even realizing it, because the culture constantly is shifting and pulling us, you know, in one direction. And that's the reason why I want to encourage people to see this film, Times of Deception, this uh, second film in the series, The Seven Churches of Revelation. It's really meant to wake us up. And, uh, you know, I thought about even bringing, you know, people that don't know the Lord. This film was very successful in France, uh, and and I was like, France, how in the world could they have anything like this film there? But it was there, and it was on national television. Um, and wow. there's an interest. Many people are concerned about the future. They know about the book of Revelations, and there's a concern about the uh, end of the world. So this could be a great door to, you know, to open for uh, people who you know that are, might be prodigals or just... You haven't had a good chance to talk. It's a beautiful experience to basically uh, ask those questions. Yeah, absolutely. And it, we're so thankful that you make these kind of films. We actually we need so much more of this. So, uh, Tim, will you kind of contrast the the Times of Fire uh, film to the to this new one, uh, Times of Deception? What's the difference between those two? The first film we have emphasized persecution. Uh, that's why the title is Times of Fire. The second okay. film is really about compromise, uh, is that we start seeing that uh, churches were either asleep, uh, they're lukewarm, they're also dis being deceived by sexual uh, possible uh, immorality and deception in, within a church. And if we think about what's happening right now, I mean, obviously your ministry is built around uh, not being uh, deceived and caught into this uh, se sexual stronghold. And I, as I study, um, you know, making films and, you know, t topics, what I do know is that almost all the idolatry activities in other cultures is built around uh, fertility and sexual activity. So when Satan wants to corrupt people, he also wants to corrupt, corrupt them sexually. And that's why uh, there is a, uh, I mean, I can tell you, I worked on the Exodus film, and I know that what happened at, uh, with the, the, the golden calf worship was a uh, huge sexual you know, party. Uh, and, and so what, and when the Israelites were in Israel, they've had these uh, high places. Well, those high places had to be torn down, but those were once again uh, areas of sexual activity that would draw people away from God and into idolatry. And so all of that is, you know, related to a stronghold that wants to get into people's lives. 
And uh, we will see that a bit in the, this film in the sense that people could be deceived and thinking that this is okay, uh, and, um, but it's not. And uh, I think it's the church with uh, uh, the Thyatira that gets involved. It says this um, in the church. It says, these are the words of the Son of God whose eyes are blazing fire whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your deeds, your love and faith, your service and perseverance, and that you are now doing more than you did at first. That's to this church. Sounds pretty good. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate the woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet by teaching her. By teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality. You know, it goes on and eating food, sacrificed to idols. So, uh, repent of her immorality, you know, uh, I mean, you're supposed to. So I really think, you know, I'm, I'm trying to relate to what your audience might be looking or, you know, attuned to, is that this is an ancient technique that the enemy wants to use to take people away from uh, the things of God and to bring people into bondage. And so um, this, um, I think... As I look at these different churches, we realize that the the playbook is pretty similar throughout every century. Uh, uh, you know, so uh, either get people really comfortable so that they're they don't need God because they're they're able to to fund whatever they want, um, and they start to grow lukewarm, uh, or have them doing something but then get distracted by something that comes in and how many ministries do we know that uh, sadly the leader gets caught into some type of uh, fallen activity Um, and so we have to really be careful everybody and uh, that's why that's why I want wanted to help Christoph as a filmmaker but I wanted to help the body of Christ because I don't see any other films like this and I don't see anyone tackling this in this area. It's really startling when you realize, wow, it's kind of like your ministry. There aren't that many that are dedicated to this particular subject matter. And uh, so for me, it's a wake-up call. When I watch this, I said, okay, yes, I can do better. I need to. This could be an area. Uh, and that's why this is about, is our heart prepared for the return of Christ? Uh, and so if you're interested, uh, it, you can go to Bible Cinema Roadshow Films dot com. Bible Cinema Roadshow Films dot com. You could see the trailer for the film. That's incredible. We'll be sure to put the links into the show notes because a lot of our listeners are driving or they're at the gym. Mm-hmm. So we know that they're going to want to click on that. Um, so once it's released in, in the the movie theaters, then is it also going to be available for streaming or how else can they get that um, if they don't get to the theater or aren't able to make it? Yes, that, that they would be able to. And um, okay. uh, in the future, they could go to uh, just seven, the number seven churches.com. They could go there and they could, uh, they, they'll be able to get access to the film, but you know, in the future. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. And then how do they how do they also preview some of the other work that you've done? Because you've done a lot of films. So where do they go to to preview the library? You mentioned that it was on Netflix, but a lot of our listeners unsubscribe to Netflix. So where else can they go? <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. I hear you. Um, yep. Uh, uh, I'm at um, patternsofevidence dot com. Patternsofevidence dot com. And Perfect. that. Uh, is in fact we have a weekly uh, updates that we do on biblical archaeology um, so we've been publishing those for people and we just keep everyone updated we're working on more of these types of films uh, t- trying to be helpful to uh, show evidence I remember I'll just share with you that that uh, uh, I had a young I had a, a family that uh, told me that they were helping us with the films. You know, uh, now we t- we are we take donations now, but at the time, uh, they put some money in, and I you know found out why, and they said that well, their son was at at uh, church and he had all sorts of questions, uh, but the youth pastor at that time uh, just said, come on, don't worry about it. Let's you know it was like it was kind of a deep question, and 
and he did get his question answered, and he ended up going off to college, and he came back uh, for you know th- in Thanksgiving and said, "Hey, I don't believe anymore." Mm-hmm. Um, and but that's not uncommon. There's many many Christian kids who are raised in a Christian home, but it hasn't they haven't really owned it or they haven't really known you know what what the, you know uh, the culture is so strong. Uh, I even have gone and filmed at what would be considered seminaries that are incredibly liberal. There isn't a believer in the seminary. They're mm-hmm. atheists or agnostics. And um, uh, so what's happening is is that is that uh, these films, the patterns of evidence films, are showing that there is a evidence for the Bible and for the Exodus and for the. In fact, the one I'm really excited about too is called the Moses controversy. That one is about writing. Uh, and it's about the first alphabet that shows up. It shows up exactly where we believe the Israelites were in Egypt. And somebody who's not an Egyptian took uh, a hieroglyphs and modified them into alphabetic letters. So uh, the bull's head eventually becomes the letter A. And, wow. uh, and so the ba and ka and pa and like uh, home, you know, or house, those types of things. They didn't have any um, uh, vowels, but they had consonants, and that became the proto sinaitic inscriptions. But what does it tell us in the Bible? It says that they were to take these commandments and write them on their doorposts and teach them to their children. So that film is a huge, uh, wonderful film of connecting the Hebrew, uh, early Hebrew, to an alphabet. And that became the basis of all alphabets and spread so what we use today so god i believe gift gave gave us the gift of communication so primarily we would know his word Mm -hmm. and the bible has been you guys know is the number one book uh printed and and then in john it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god in order to know his word you have to have an alphabet so those are the types of films that i'm making and uncovering uh and then uh, we've done some on the location of red sea and we had uh, the location of of mount sinai and the covenants there uh and then we've got um other films that are coming out quite often i'm also working on one that we're very uh excited about called the american miracle which is coming next year which is going to be uh, all these miraculous events that happen in the formation of America because we're coming wow. up to the 250th anniversary. And so a number of people are saying America uh, was, uh, you know, is a bad place. Well, it's, uh, I don't believe that, and many, many people don't believe that, and we're going to tell the untold story. Excellent. That sounds incredible. Excellent. We're looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, Tim, thank you for your work. That is so beneficial and so needed and uh, you know I think the Christian community is really looking for these these kinds of things and so uh, thanks for joining us today and, and telling a little bit of that story and I'm sure this will uh, this will get many more people involved in, in seeing this so thank you well thank you for what you're doing as well it's very important uh, and I uh, I know it's it's interesting how there are all these all of us that have Never probably thought we'd be doing what we'd be doing, are now doing it. And I guess my encouragement to everyone is in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says that we're Christ's workmanship. And I'm paraphrasing this now. Created uh, um, to do good works before the beginning of, of creation. So it's an important, important role that we have. Absolutely. And so I think people need to look for those things you're supposed to be doing and then do them. Correct. I love that. And I think that's a great way to bring today's episode to a close. So all of our listeners, thanks for tuning in. We're going to put all those show links um, or links in our show notes. So you can go check out the film, go out to the theaters, support work like this. It It sends a message and it shows that we want more of this type of content. So let's get out there and let's support this film and keep doing, uh, you know, the great work that you're doing, Tim. We appreciate it. And thanks for being a friend of Covenant Eyes. Thank you again for having me. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in for this episode of the Covenant Eyes podcast. Take care. God bless. We'll see you next time.